Okay, uh, Township Committee meeting. This is the budget workshop, March 22nd, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access, uh, being held remotely. Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Here. Oh. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Unmute. Not mute. Yeah, I don't see her. She's here. Here yeah. we go. Okay. Here. Great. Uh, Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. And Mr. Templeton. Here. <coughs> uh, also present, present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Uh, we've got Aaron Provenzano, our IT specialist. Uh, we've got uh, Chief uh, DeSanto, our police chief. We have Robin Burso, our auditor. And let's, I think I got everyone there. Uh, as this is a workshop, we'll dispense with the flag salute uh, sunshine statement. Mrs. Lohr, would you like to do that? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Um, remote meeting statement. Um, this meeting is being held uh, via a Zoom remote platform. The meeting ID and passcode uh, are published on the agenda and available on our website. And uh, advanced public comments. Uh, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail and they must be received no later than six hours prior to the comm commencement of the published public meeting start time and all advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's email or to the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey and uh, public comments submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio options or by typing in their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. Um, and the agenda document for this meeting has, uh, is available on the Delanco Township website, delancotownship.com. And for the record, um, I did get a chance to go through the emails um, received to date, and I have no advanced public comments for this meeting, Mayor. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, at this time, meeting's over to the public for comments and questions. Uh, if you're present, audio on Zoom, please state your name and address, uh, or raise your hand in the chat. I guess we can do that. Any public comments? Seeing and hearing none, uh, this uh, public comment session is now closed and we'll start off with the uh, only item on the agenda, 2021 Municipal Budget Preparation Workshop. So did everyone get a chance to look at the last supplement that Mr. Schwab prepared uh, last week? Yes. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. And Mr. Schwab, would you you have any no, nice words for us before we get our... All right, I'll try to summarize my memo, but you have the, the details on it. But if you remember last time we were concerned with the dollars last time, it was an uncut version and it was a, you know, four and a half to five percent rate increase and that wasn't acceptable as we knew. And so we went over a bunch of items, made some changes to get below the cap, uh, but the goal was to show you what a zero increase would be and give you the options for building or not building on that number so that you can see what, what I saw as the options. And uh, one of the key things we always talk about is the surplus. And one of the issues was whether or not the 1.2 million that I had used as my first run uh, was a reasonable number. We tried to avoid that, but one possibility would be to increase that uh, by $50,000, $50,000 approximately, a little bit more than a percent on the tax rate. Uh, because we do know we're getting the federal money through the state, but we don't know what the rules are. So there is some chance that that will 
help out and therefore be able to help rebuild surplus. Uh, one of the other items that uh, we've used in the past that I had talked to Rob about was the deferred school tax, which is the accounting line uh, that is based on the difference between when uh, the payments are made on school taxes and when we pass it on to the schools. Uh, and we could have used that, but uh, we would have had to make that decision earlier. So Rob could have included that in the annual financial statement. So pretty much that's out. Uh, it is something you can think about for future years if you run into trouble. So that's one option is to raise that. I use 50,000 for that number. Uh, the other issues are the appropriations. We decided uh, we're not going to include the 30,000 for the legal OE for Hawk Island property lien, the 25,000 for engineering for the planning and permitting for the waterfront park seawall uh, can be covered by capital. So it's not in the operating budget. I uh, also moved 20,000 from the engineering operating budget into capital. Uh, there have been question, uh, requests for from public works for equipment and I reduced the uh, dollar amount for that to try to fit it in with the OE. I reduced the dollar amount for upgrading the phone system in the hopes that we can do it at a 5,000 lesser cost. Uh, one of the things we've done in the past year is we've taken 5% of the operating department. And uh, when we apply that, it comes out to about $20,000. I subtracted that from each of the uh, operating department's lines. Uh, we have none of them exceeded that number last year. So uh, that's always there because as we said, if we need it, it's there. When we don't need it, it goes to surplus. Uh, I also limited the 5,000 that's in the uh, administration OE for the use of a consultant through First Jersey Management, the firm is closing, even though there are things that I think uh, the individual who does it could do. Uh, we can either, if there's enough funds and it's necessary and I can't handle it, we can do it as a part-time employee, but not directly through that contract. So I eliminated that 5,000. Total of all that's 113,000. We're looking for 200,000 net total. We also uh, I talked to the chief in detail about uh, their budget. There's the largest budget, one of the largest increases. So in addition to any other changes, uh, the chief was able to analyze his budget in detail, knowing information today that he didn't know back in November. We do have an officer who was leaving uh, when that officer leaves, we'll probably have more overtime, so that had to be increased, but the replacements are at significantly less cost. He calculated now, he knows a lot of dates and deadlines, and he was able to uh, make some significant changes there. Uh, in addition, uh, we looked at some of the newer expenses. One of the newer expenses was the part-time uh, police clerk, and he felt that if, uh, we, if we did have to make changes, which he was not in favor of, that rather than have it cut into the on the street policing, that would be an area that could have a reduction, which is perhaps as much as $10,000 in this year's budget, potentially. Uh, there was a $6,700 charge that he had listed in salary and wage that belonged in other expense. So we made that change. So if you're looking at the numbers, uh, that's part of it. And he made a number of changes in the other expense costs for some new programs that we can go into some detail, but he believes that uh, he can make a $45,000 uh, reduction overall and be able to operate the department uh, satisfactorily, not as with the improvements he was looking for, but that uh, we believe we can make do with that. One of the things I make note is that every time we cut an operating item, even and then we don't spend it, there's a difference between what we budgeted and what we spent, and we're used to having that going to operating surplus which carries on to the available surplus. So what these do, what the, when we reduce OE, we do reduce available future surplus. So that does have that impact. Just like if you increase how much of the surplus you apply to a particular budget, that reduces the available surplus in the next year. If we have a good year and new things happen and so on, we can rebuild that and there is no downside to it. Uh, because again, we don't spend a dime that we don't need to spend it has nothing to do with what's budgeted. The budget is a plan, but they don't spend more than what's needed. So whether it's there or not, if we run into an issue, then you'll see emergencies or you'll see transfers or we'll be coming to you and tell you, guess what? 
we thought we could do it with these numbers, we can't, here's why. And every once in a while we run into that issue, whether it's in vehicle repairs or in building repairs or in equipment issues or in personnel issues. Mostly it's the other way around. Mostly we're able to cancel in surplus. So the grand total with all that is 153,000 from the operating, the 50,000 in the surplus, that's the 200,000 in order to uh, bring your uh, down to about zero. Uh, Rob took the numbers, he produced a new document, made the adjustments with the reserve fund collected taxes. And actually the spreadsheet we gave you shows a minor decrease. It has a lot to do with how last year's tax rate was calculated. I use 161 uh, and it's actually 60 point something or other. So, you know, we're talking about approximate. We'll get to a close number once you made a decision. I pointed out that uh, we are, I did put in uh, $358,000 to reduce uh, outstanding debt. Legally, you only have to pay off 78,000. But in order to, if you start reducing how much debt you pay off, you'll start building up that accumulated debt. And a couple of years from now, you'll be into long-term bonding and you're fortunate to not have to deal with that anymore. So you wanna keep your debt service as steady as you can, rising slightly so that you're not afraid to do capital projects, which every community needs to do. Uh, so that is the general summation from that. I remind you, I updated the capital. Uh, Harry gave me some more numbers, which of course are always higher than the estimates from a year ago or six months ago. And uh, it adds about 100,000 in overall debt. It doesn't change the appropriation for down payment money, but it does change the overall debt for the future. So over a 10 year period, for example, it'll add $10,000 plus interest a year. I also noted that uh, in the open space fund, we we took out the Gateway Park, uh, significant improvements. We'll still have to do the, the uh, area to dig out for the EAB to do its plantings, but uh, there was money in there to do the parking lot, but uh, Harry's recommendation would put us over the top on how much we would spend there. So I only put the down payment money there and put the, the balance to be paid off in general debt. If in fact the open space budget can handle any of the debt, we can do that in the future, but I wouldn't count on it. Um, and so then I also said, look very carefully at capital, even though it doesn't affect this year's budget, make sure that you're comfortable with doing the projects we're doing at the dollars that we're talking about doing it because that's, one of the purposes of the budget, it's a plan. And if that's your plan, then we're gonna carry it out and we're gonna spend the money uh, to get these things done. If it's not something you're comfortable with doing, now's the time to say, no, let's not go in that direction. Let's postpone it, let's eliminate it. That's your judgment, not the judgment uh, that what I'm putting together. I gave you as an attachment, uh, the that 5% department breakdown, the prior year surplus use calculation. So you see what the percentage of surplus was used in the past. Uh, the tax rate comparison between this county, the school, the township over the last 20 years. The pilot revenue estimates, you talk about pilots a lot. And uh, so Joe Raymond did some estimates on it. Aaron gave us the actual billing for this year, plus we had from Rob last year, so you can get a feel for where that's going, even though it's listed as unanticipated revenue. We do anticipate that it'll rebuild surplus. It becomes a major item in that item, that line. Uh, the new project, capital projects list, the debt service spreadsheet based on the new projects. And I updated the budget projections uh, using the new number that we have now and the various changes based on guesstimates on increases in appropriations, increases in revenues, increases in use of surplus, increases in assessed valuation, higher and lower. So you can see any of those four major inputs into the budget will impact the tax rate. And if we do really well, it shows actually a reduction in next year's tax rate. Uh, but we don't know until next year what that's gonna be, but that's what the purpose of projections are to give you a range. And that's pretty much what I have. And I'm hoping that uh, you were able to follow that stuff and you got a bunch of questions or based on it, you got a bunch of conclusions. Now, I'll leave it up. We may start off with a couple, uh, both for you, Richard, and uh, and and Mr. Inverso on the uh, on on the surplus, uh, the one point two five, the comfort level with that, and are we 
out on a limb too much there. Oh, Rob, I would say thought? it's on, yeah, it's slightly on the high side. We returned this year 1235000 and we had a very good year. So, you know, that's, I would say that's the maximum we could go is one million two fifty. I think that if we hadn't received the information about the federal money coming through the state, that we would uh, be a little less inclined to go that way. But if you're looking for the long run, you're better off not doing that. If you're going to add fifty thousand dollars to the amount to be raised by taxation, if you want to be a little bit more careful, that would be the place to not raise the 50,000. If we do get the federal money, if it's used to offset real costs or carry over, all the better. But the safe, that's the safe overall way to uh, deal with thinking of the future of the budget is to not use that extra 50. And as of now, Monday afternoon, there's no new information on how that funding is coming or restrictions or any other use limitations? Nothing that I've seen. Okay. All right. Um, I think one of the things to note is that if we just look at the couple items that we didn't get the income from in 2020 that was related to COVID, you might be between twenty five dollars and $50,000 in that area. Either you can use it to offset it, or if nothing else, in 2021, so we can only budget what we actually received. Mm -hmm. So we will probably help rebuild our surplus in municipal court fees and uh, payments of delinquent taxes, a few of those other items that we didn't get what we normally get, we get back to a regular year. On the other hand, we had big construction permit fees and they will start slowing down in 2022. So, but we didn't budget, you know, the max that we could have budgeted. We just went up a significant amount, but not what we legally could have gone up. So we're trying to be as careful as we can as Rob said last year, we rebuilt that number. Let's hope we can do that again, in which case using the extra 50 is not going to harm us significantly. Okay. Uh, Chief, your, your department uh, had the biggest uh, adjustment uh, going into this. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on that and how, as far as adjusting to it or what would you like back or, um, well, what, what, I, uh, what I can tell you is about equipment. When you start cutting equipment, you're, um, you're just pushing the inevitable down the road because we, most of our equipment is commune equipment, so that means it's being shared by multiple officers. So if you don't start adding equipment, then that multiple use as the department grows is just going to cause more wear and tear. And then next year, uh, the budget's going to show a reflection of buying two more pieces of equipment rather than one uh, this year. So all you're doing is you're pushing it down the road. And and I did so with the understanding that with the, uh, you know, the rescue money coming, maybe that would be able to, you know, get us caught back up with the equipment. That was my only, I guess, uh, reason why I agreed to cut the equipment I could. And I made the cuts where I think it were, you know, possibly could make. Um, uh, I took a stand on the type of personnel um, and made the cuts there. And also, once again, uh, the area that we're cutting salary and wages, I think, could come back once the, um, the ground is back, you know, back solid. And the expectation would be for it to come back. Um, the, the hesitation, like uh, Mr. Schwab said, is, when you start cutting and then then you never be able to get back to where you were because there's going to be an increase to get back to where you were and no one's going to want to swallow that and um and i told you before every year i present you a budget and i don't spend the money that i budget it i spend what i need and i could easily ran out last year and bought all the equipment that i asked for this year but because you know, I, I believe, and I'll put it, you know, blame and terms, I play, I play the game fair. I buy what I need to buy. I didn't buy anything more than I budgeted for or planned to. The money's in there in case something goes ter terribly wrong. So with the uh, understanding of next year, I can continue that 
incremental increase in equipment, uh, meaning that we purchase another piece every year. Uh, so, if, you know, the way I understood it, Mr. Mr. Schwab, he's asked me to help out for a short term period until we get the ground more stable and, and the rescue money comes in and, and people are back to work and, and there's, uh, you know, the pilot programs are coming in and, and the radials are coming in. Um, you know, I'm doing this with the expectation of not doing it again. I don't know if that's a fair expectation, but that's, that's my belief and that's where I stand. And the equipment that he talked about is uh, a taser, a radio, um, uh, there's social media system software. Um, I think those are the main things. GPS. The GPS. So those are operating things that no one sees from the outside, but the department sees from the inside. What about the part-time personnel? Was that included, Jesse? Yes. It's included uh, in the reduction. It's about a $35,000 salary and wage reduction and 6,500 in others, O&E, plus the 20% brings them to the 45. And that was also a reduction in staff for public works, not hiring the person they so need. We delayed that six months. So instead of budgeting that for a year, we budgeted for six months in order to save. That was in the original proposal. Okay. We didn't do any more than that. I mean, you could also decide not to fill that slot. I, I don't think we should be cutting anybody at all if we don't have to. I don't think we're in a I don't think we're in a position where we have to cut personnel. So the question I wanted to put out to the committee is Mr. Budget, Mr. Schwab's put out a, a zero increase budget. And if that's really where we want to be or have, uh, I guess, what is our, our usual modest increase to, to kind of keep things uh, going uh, with, the, with, with a plan and no, no retraction of, uh, of uh, what the various departments are trying to do and move forward. And uh, I, I I'd be supportive of, of, you know, going back up a penny or two um, and, and increase to, to support that uh, forward movement. So um, I've never agreed with a 0% increase. I just don't think it's realistic to do that. And like Jesse said, you have to make up for whatever you're pushing back this year. You have to make up for it in the next year or the next year. And you know those years may not be as uh, as good as this year, so I would rather have a tax increase, keep employees, give John his person that he needs, um, that he's been waiting for for I don't know how long now, two years. Um, no, his his person left. His person uh, left, so that's where the vacancy is. We filled the position last, last year. year. They left last year, yeah. Yeah, they left late last year, correct. Oh, okay. After um, the summer season. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in favor of cutting people, and uh, I just don't think that's the way to, to do this budget. And I still would like to contribute some funds to the school out of that found surplus to pay for their extracurricular activities and programs. Um, I asked Mr. Mersinger for a list, uh, all the ones that they actually have um, listed where they have had advisors in the past comes to about $28,000. And um, I think that found money, uh, some of that should go to them. Let's give them their fair share and do that. And let's do what's right. This is for the children. It's not for uh, Mr. Mersinger, it's for the children. And uh, it's for their programs. And uh, I think it's important that children have extracurricular activities during school. Uh, it's good for their self-esteem. It's good to build relationships. And uh, it's something they can take forward as they move on to high school. And I, I think it's very important. And I strongly urge the committee to do that, to give that that found money part of it and earmark it for extracurricular activities. Hey, this is Fern. Uh, yes. 
I'm in agreement with that. I have a couple of concerns. One, I'd like to see the school budget. Two, I'd like to know how much um, money in uh, the aid they're getting from the federal government. Uh, and the third thing that concerned me was I came out of the school board meeting uh, and give me a second here. I'd like to read what they passed. Uh, you know, if, because they're so concerned about their funding, uh, let's see, agenda. They, they passed this, which, and this is what concerns me, uh, is uh, it had to do with the Board of Education uh, with uh, travel and related expenses. Uh, and by passing this, they are uh, not abiding by the, uh, the, the state rule. Uh, see if, I'll just read this here. Uh, whereas the board members uh, to receive a Wait a minute, hold on a second. The Delanco Township Board of Education recognizes school staff and board members will incur travel expenses related to and within the scope of their current responsibilities and for travel that promotes the delivery of instruction and further uh, efficient operations of the school districts. And then whereas requires board members to receive approval of these expenses by a majority of the full voting membership of the board and staff members to receive prior approval for these expenses by the superintendent of schools and the majority of the full voting membership of the board. Uh, a board of education may establish for regular district business travel only an annual school year threshold of $200 per staff where prior board approval shall not be required unless the annual threshold of the staff uh, member is to exceed in the given school year. Uh, be it deemed that the Board of Education to be necessary, uh, whereas travel and related expenses not in, not in compliance with NJAC 6A colon 23B dash, uh, looks like L1 ET, okay? So they're saying that they're not gonna follow those rules. They're just gonna go ahead and approve these or let people spend this money without getting approval from the board. And, you know, here they are, they're concerned about every penny that there's being spent, and yet they're just giving a blanket approval of this. So that, that part concerns me. But to go Let's, back, I'm okay with setting money aside, you know, whether it's 25000 right. in our budget, you know, providing there's accountability. Um, right. I agree. I don't understand... Um, was that approved at that meeting? Because I, at listened, budget meeting. To that, I listened to that meeting. Yeah, it and, was approved at the budget meeting. And that was read out loud? It was. Hmm. I, I did listen to that. I didn't hear that. Uh, I would like that defined. Uh, you because know. that doesn't sound uh, like that would be advisable by, by their attorney. And... Uh, by their auditor even. Uh, so I would like that question defined, but, uh, but what I'm proposing has nothing to do with that. It's for programs for the children. And I think we should earmark a, a some certain and that if we can designate specific programs for this money that we would do so as long as they're being accountable for their budget. I, I certainly would agree with that, Fern. And yeah, I would ask about that. Accountable ask for their budget. Also, how much money are they getting from the federal government? Uh, you know, if they're going to get three or four hundred thousand dollars, then they can do this on their own. Uh, right. You know, but you know, in the event that something were, you know, we get into the school year, uh, that you know things go a little bit haywire, and they need some need the money, and we have it set aside in our budget. You know. Again, we would all have to agree to uh, go down that road, but I'm, in, I'm not opposed to it. Thank you. Um, I think the, 
federal money that's going to come through the state, I think they were concerned whether or not they could use it in this year's budget, as we are just con as concerned. So we won't be able to use it in our budget. It'll probably be used, it'll come to our surplus, whether or not it'll go to their surplus. I don't know how that works, Rob. I don't know if you do school boards at all. Uh, yes, I do school boards. It, it depends how the money is going to be appropriated to them. Um, right. I'm not sure I haven't seen anything on it. So typically, if you get federal money during the year, sometimes you can, um, through Fund 20, a grant process, use that money. I'm not sure how it's going to be allocated. I don't know. I just think even if we earmark it and have it in the event that we can assist in programs for the youth, and that would be it, not for any other purpose, that we should do that. I think it's the right thing to do. John, you got a comment? Yes, please. Thank you, Mike. Um, my position, I appreciate, Richard, everything you've done, and Rob, uh, in retweaking this budget to get zero. Uh, and Jesse, your uh, you know, hard work and cutting and making hard cuts. So we have our team working for us, making these cuts, and you want to turn around and hand out $28,000 uh, for programs that are stipends to the teachers. And I read them, uh, playground and lunchroom advisors, 4,000, girls basketball court coach, 3,000, boys basketball coach, 3,000, uh, you know, and so forth. It's newspaper advisor, $1,800. I don't think this is our place. You, go, you wanna give these kids these advisor stipends when our own people like Jesse and John and Janice and Richard are making cuts within their own departments. These departments are our business, okay? I don't see where $28,000 is going to make or break them, uh, you know, in the school board. And I'm very surprised that this came up this year when I've been doing this for a long time. That as, as a mayor, as a committeeman, no one has ever stopped me and cornered me and say, hey, let's go have a cup of coffee and talk about this. All of a sudden, they show up on our Facebook wall here, not Facebook, well, our Zoom meeting, and say, hey, can we have a piece of your pilot? I'm still blown out by that. I'm, I'm still blown out by that. There's been plenty of revenues. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something else. And you can put this on the record. I'm mighty offended as a taxpayer citizen, businessman in this town, that I see these signs, no, no contracts still working, no contracts still working. I've been in the trenches with our police department, our public works department, our administrative employees. We work things out. We talk about hard subjects. We get it done. They don't have a contract with the teachers, but yet they're going to squawk about a drama club advisor. We don't have a drama club. And Kate, I don't like the letter that you got from him where it says, uh, you know, that he's not prepared to discuss. Uh, I'm not currently discussing these individual cuts. Well, if, if you want money out of our till, you better start talking about what's going on with these special education fees and these transportation fees. You know, don't cut us out of that. But, oh, by the way, here's a little list of pitlings you can give us. Okay. Anyway, Mike, getting back to your, um, your inquiry, I, I don't want to go up the token one or two pennies just for the sake of padding that surplus. I still see this town in a boom state. We have more warehousing coming. We have misfits. We have uh, the other places in the middle of misfits. We have this new property on Coopertown Road, um, who I was talking to Carol DeBolt, um, you know, something's coming down the pike there. We're still in a boom and we still have the crossing still kicking butt, selling properties. And, uh, you know, I don't think our surplus is going to be strained at all. And I, I'm going to say some, one more thing and I'll get off my pulpit. Thank you. When we worked with Newton's Landing Development, that was supposed to be the saving grace of the town because at the time, it was 5000 bucks a home, 6000 bucks a home, and no school children, okay? What happened? Something happened. That school, so many school boards have come before us, okay, in 20 years, different members. And I'm not saying one's at fault more than the other. Why has nobody fixed the school issue in 20 years? They're still short on cash, still short on cash. 20 years, Newton's Landing, 238 homes, okay? I don't get it. I wish we don't, I don't want to get involved in their, in their business. I don't want to get involved in their budget unless they want to do it all year round. If they want to sit with us, talk about this, talk about that. 
but no, I'm these little the letter that Mersinger gave us with these little little trinkets. What what is that? Thank you. Well, I had asked just for the programs for the children. I didn't ask for anything else. I wanted it to be specific to programs so that if we agreed to uh, provide some funds that it was earmarked for use for the children's programs, not for any but they, specific. You know, they came out on Facebook and so, you know, 5.2 positions they want to lay off. Nobody said what positions. I, I'm sorry, is it, is it the lunchroom help? Not that that's any different than a, a history uh, they, teacher, is it? Is it, is I don't it know. administration? <laughs> well, what do you mean you don't know, Kate? You're lobbying for them. You should know. And, and they, they, they said that they can't disclose those. <laughs> well, then what? You can't just, why are you going to bat for them? They want to be so secret. I'm not going to bat for them. I'm going to bat for our children. Our children so, are doing fine in this town. This is a great little town. These kids are great, except Pop and Wheelie. I'm not in favor of cutting any of our staff. Jesse shouldn't have to cut his staff, and John shouldn't have to cut his possible. That's the other thing. You said you don't want to cut anybody. These you're not you're not laying anybody off in our budget. You're just yeah, they are. Jesse would be no, laying you're off cutting the position before Jesse it would be laying off a person. You have to lay off somebody. Jesse is laying point. off someone. Yes, I read it. So Jesse's laying off, and John's not hiring a replacement that he so desperately needs. And I think those two should be put back in the budget. I'm sorry. Well, Jesse wants to add another man. Was that taken out? No. No, I was asked to make a choice and and I was still firm on sworn personnel. I will give up civilian personnel all day um, to maintain the, the level of staffing of the sworn personnel um, because that will come back to haunt this township, uh, both with you know just public safety and two budget wise, you push these things off, um, my fear is the department will never get back to where it needs to be. So, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll make the cuts and make the hard decisions where I have to make them, um, you know, and, the, and like I said, I anticipate myself or someone else coming back to you a year from now, two years from now and saying we need that part-time position back. Um, yeah. You know, whether you agree with it or it goes through, but just because, I work with you this year doesn't mean that uh, it's not going to be needed. So like I said, I don't have a problem working with you. You've worked with me all these years. And if this is what you need to get done for to get through the year, uh, I'm willing to, you know, do the cuts that I, I propose. Uh, you know, if you're going to say, give me money back, I'll, I'll tell you where I want the money back. And, and I'll prioritize it and I'll let you know. It might not be in agreement with these guys, if you converter comes back to me and says, okay, you only need to cut half of what you cut, um, I'm going to prioritize what I think is most important. And it's not always, you know, it may not always be the civilian personnel. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Um, if it comes down to what I need right now and what I can go without, and that's, you know, that's where I'm at. So, I mean, the ball's in your court. I can't cut anymore. If you cut anymore, you're, you're risking public safety. Um, and, um, and if you give me money back, I'll tell you where I would like to spend it. Well, okay. as my question of, uh, 20, 25 minutes ago, uh, we have a zero budget that Mr. Schwab's prepared, uh, based on our previous meeting. Uh, I, I, I would like to see us go back up, uh, uh, to what, what's been our normal increase for the last couple of years and uh, not lean back things. I mean, yeah, we're forecasting some increase in revenues next year, the year after and so forth. Uh, we don't know when and where the federal money is coming in, but this is, these are the dollars we, we know of now. Uh, these are the expenses we know of now. So um, uh, what comfort level does the committee have uh, with an increase to recover some of the cuts that have been made? Well, what, what percentage, take? Richard, what percentage is Jesse's cut? About 1%. I would give him back his cuts. I'm sorry. I don't agree in cutting the police department. It's a vital part so, of this. To clarify, um, okay, it's not the department. It's the civilian help in the office, correct? 
10,000 of the 45,000. Cool. Yeah. So it's still 45,000 total, right, Jesse? Or was it, I thought it was more than that. No, it's, um, I believe it's 45,000 total. When you okay. have the, the civilian uh, wages and, and, the, um, and the equipment that was cut. I would give it all back. So that would be putting a penny back in, and that's what, Mike, you're lobbying for the, another penny or two? Yeah, I, I think that's that's a starting point to get back. Uh, uh, um, I don't think I don't think zero s serves us well in this uh, at this time. I would never I would never agree to a zero budget. How about you, Chris? Burn okay. zero one two negative one. I'm at one. Uh, where we're at right now, knowing that we don't know what this federal money is going to be. Uh, and that'll end up in our surplus for the following year. So if we budget through for this year, and then knowing that wherever the federal money is, then we've got the, the two warehouses coming in, and then uh, the completion of the, the development, those dollars will be coming in, which, you know, I think at some given point in time, you know, where the surplus, you know, you were talking 1.2, you know, when you start getting that, that kind of cash, then that surplus builds up probably well over 1 1.5, 1 1.8. Uh, and then at that point, then we, we need to cut back, uh, you know, and not spend that money just because we have it, uh, but give back to the taxpayers and, and give them the break then. But for this year here, uh, with the cuts that we're looking at, uh, you know, I mean, if Jesse's looking at forty-five thousand, uh, you know, maybe we give him back that that one person of the ten thousand, and uh, then kick those other items down the road that of uh, equipment that uh, the other equipment when we get into uh, that additional cash flow in. Fern, Jesse just said that if we give him back money, he's going to make the determination on it, not us. So okay. he's not going to assure that the employee would that the employee would be back. So I would give him his forty-five thousand. That's a penny right there, a little over a penny. I would go for one point five. Are you, Chris? I'm in the in the one penny. I think if 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 the chief looked closely at his budget and sees that some of this stuff could get kicked down the road, then I don't think that the full forty-five thousand would be appropriate. Um, the same if if we can give public works back their six months of an employer an employee, I think that that's a good call. The uh, the extra fifty thousand in the appropriation, I'm I, I'm good without that being taken into consideration. And and the only the only not to pile on the school issue, but. Kate, I don't know if you've heard anything further, but I haven't on the on the library. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything. I don't know if Doug right. had, Doug hasn't so, gotten back to us. Right. So as far as like things that are pretty critical for children's development, I, I would want to hear their position on that at this point, where the library stands. You know, we don't believe it's going anywhere, but I would hate to pad this one area and get a drama club or get whatever, the, these kind of ancillary items that could be part of DISA or any any other organization that wants to step up. I, I don't think that that's our, our responsibility, but the library is, and making sure that that resource is for not just the children, but for all of the residents of Delanco is handled. So I would go up the penny, but that's that's kind of where I fall. Now, is everyone, uh, as far as the penny, are, are you okay with the extra 50000 uh, to augment the surplus? Uh, Absolutely. If that was, if you'd want to go another penny to avoid um, pulling the extra fifty out of surplus? We have plenty in surplus, and it's going to be recovered. So I would take it out of surplus. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with a million two fifty. Okay. We got plenty of cash. 
I'm good listening. To be in. Great. So what's that look like, Richard? Well, remember, the, if you leave that there, if you say you're going to add it, 45,000 back in appropriations, wherever you've decided, then you've got your pen, approximately. Because right now, if you eliminated the 50,000 increase the surplus, you're doing the penny that way. So it's either on the revenue side or it's on the expenditure side. You've decided to leave the revenue side the same. So we're still at zero. Now you got it. Everybody agrees. I remember of the, there's $153,000 in appropriation reductions. $45,000 of it uh, was through the police department. And then we had the 20%, uh, 5%, I'm sorry, which is 20,000 for all the other operating departments. The other stuff we pretty much took care of without having to deal with that. So those are really the, if you're okay with all the other cuts, if you leave the 5% reduction, and then you may, if you make a decision about a number of dollars with the police department, whether you condition it on the employee or not, you can do that. What Jesse said is what he'll make his recommendation, but you make the decision on the positions. Uh, you know, you can do that. And so if you want 1%, then you say, well, let's put $45,000 back in the police department as long as it includes not laying anybody, not laying anyone off, if that's what your condition is. Then you have to decision, Kate had talked about, Kate and Fern had talked about 25, 28,000 uh, towards the school district. And so therefore, in order to cover that, You'd either add an extra penny or you'd have to increase your use of surplus based on the assumption that uh, the found money, the prior year pilot for Living Spring, which I assume is what you guys are talking about, uh, is something we would have anticipated and therefore that'll rebuild surplus. So that means you'd go to another 50,000 of surplus or another 25,000, let's say, to offset any uh, amount set aside towards the school district programs. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not in support of anything towards the school district at that time. Uh, I wouldn't be until we had uh, enough information of their budget specifics uh, to make an informed decision. Uh, but you have to make that decision pretty much now whether to set that aside or not, because you're going to need to introduce yeah. at your April 12th meeting, and we have to put that together. So you're not going to have another opportunity. You can amend it later on. Yeah, I suppose. But I think I think the uh, the the federal the the tranche that's uh, coming down in their direction uh, will help things a lot. Uh, they've got some structural things that they need to address uh, that have been long time uh, building for a long time, and uh, uh, I, I really don't. We we just do not have enough financial information from the district. We've been asking for it for some time. We've never received it. And I, I just think it's uh, uh, it's not not good financial judgment just to uh, write them a check uh, without fully understanding uh, their financial management, to put it bluntly. So um, you wouldn't be writing a check; you'd be setting aside funds. But that's well, yeah, sure yeah, that's understood. Yeah. you don't write a check till you authorize the check. You yeah. can right. authorize. Exactly. You can budget an amount and not spend it. And not spend it. Appropriation and one I'm disbursement. Saying. So two separate items. I know. I want to make sure you don't get that hole. I'm <laughs> saying set up a line item. And if we use it, we use it. And if we don't, it'll go into our surplus next year. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Wolf, for administration, say. is there anything that, that you uh, gave up that you'd like back? This is an equal opportunity budget workshop. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Um, I think the, the uh, reduction to my operating line item um, line will be fine for this year. I will caution the committee um, to, uh, we are already on track for a very robust um, ordinance year. So publishing will probably go over that line item, but I have other areas that I can make that up in, as well as not so much 2021, our um, election costs have gone up. Um, and 2022 though, and I really would hate to have to try to make that up, uh, will probably be a significant increase in election costs to the municipality that are charged back um, uh, our appropriate share. Um, we will, the law is requiring that we have early voting starting in 2022, um, which means um, 10 days of early voting 
uh, in addition to the regular um, election day. And those costs most likely will be, um, you know, sent out to the municipalities. Um, you know, those additional costs. There's been a significant increase in the amount of uh, vote by mail P, um, uh, registrations. Those costs are sent to the municipality. So um, we've been pretty steady over the years with our election costs, pretty, you know, stable. But um, we did see that uh, increase a little bit for, two, uh, for 2020, probably again in 2021, and then and a significant increase in 2022. But I will... For this year, I will make it work. It will. I will make it work. So thank you for asking. Mrs. Martin, uh, Planning Board. She didn't have her numbers. We really, the applications are paid for oh. by the applicants' escrow accounts. I, I don't. As we look at planning, which you all know about, in terms of. Uh, the marijuana laws, is that going to require tailored design to spend extra time? It, what I would foresee would be funding that would need to be spent on things like that, planning issues. Um, so, which is not necessarily accounted for in my budget because we didn't know what was coming along. There is some funding in the budget for tailored design and for planning um, discussions and work that they have to do. So again, it's like trying to look in your crystal ball and see what's coming down the road. I thought you had the clearest one. <laughs> no, it. Uh, <laughs> if I did, I would have hit the lottery by now. <laughs> No, that uh, the planning really? thing that uh, we've been working on with the Bridge Commission, uh, we're, since there's a fresh re-exam report, we're trying to call as much fresh current information out of that and avoid uh, going to tailor design to craft something out of whole cloth. Uh, the other thing I just learned the other day is we have to do a new flood control ordinance because the ones that were done three years ago are um, outdated already. So anyway, um, no, we have a through? lot of we have a lot of planning reports, as you say, that we can pull from for the Route One Hundred and Thirty corridor project. So you know, it's just the so, marijuana thing that I see coming up the pike right now that might cost um, some funding. Uh, so we're we're back up a penny now. Uh, Anything additional that uh, we're back up a penny based on what, Mike? The police, the forty-five thousand. Yeah. Is that what you suggest? Well, at least, okay. yes. Okay. It seems to be consensus on that. Is everyone in agreement on that, or to, to yes. reinstate the uh, police department? Yes. John, Chris, yes. Fern. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't for the full forty-five. I thought that that could be dispersed. Uh, some other some other way thinking the public works position that they wanted so if you give the police department back 30,000 and then allocate the other to someone to a department that made a cut that really might take the same position that if you if you don't spend for their equipment that they needed or the person they needed then we're going to be looking at it again next year Chris I've learned from the past that you know our job here today in this past two months is really just to come up with that number because the administrator and the department heads, they'll, they're going to work within their departments and make it happen. And come November, there'll be transfers. And because there's been in the past, I've stated my thing. I didn't want money to go here. I didn't want money to go there. It went there anyway. We don't have that right to micromanage. Not anymore. I think we used to, but not anymore. We can't, you know, we put the, we put the penny back in. It's, it's Richard's budget. Is that is that right, basically? That's really up to you. You can micromanage if you decide. <laughs> you you basically had. We assume that's because you have confidence in how the department operate, where you haven't felt you needed to step in and micromanage. Thank you, John. Thank you. 
Uh, to return to uh, Kate's question, what's the committee, uh, everyone think about uh, any a line item for, I'm not gonna put a label on it, any kind of uh, support to the district? Uh, up or down, do you wanna create that or do you wanna just uh, not address that now? And uh, Richard, would that be, um, could we label that um, part for the library in the event that that contract comes through a lot more than we anticipate and we can't lower it should we can we do something that it could be either or to cover ourselves interesting question because that's always a question you're negotiating a contract whether it's with employees with another entity if you budget a particular number then you pretty much signaled your position um so that's that's one issue uh whether or not you can put a line item that says well if we have to pay a bigger rent for the library space then it's not available for after school activities but that's not rent. Wanna... It, it's not rent even though they've got it listed on their line i appreciate it. that's what they call it yes they, they, call, they call it rent it. but it's actually uh maintenance or custodial uh, right. Te right. Technically, that's how it shows up on our paperwork too, for budget purposes. Because you're, we don't have the kind of. But yes, we'll try to change that so it doesn't say that. But yeah. the same idea. The idea of an amount that needs to be transferred to the school district as part of our agreement for the use of the library within their facilities, and whether or not that's tied in. That's. I don't know how to do that, Rob. I don't know if you have any ideas uh, for that. You're probably not aware there. There's some discussions to whether or not. They've asked for some significant greater contribution towards the maintenance of that area of their building that the Delanco Library operates out of. And so there's nothing budgeted for that to cover that. If they come to agreement on a high number, I would, on a number, I would hope one would say, well, perhaps you've adopted your budget, which didn't show it as revenue. We've adopted our budget, which didn't show it as an expenditure. So perhaps it's a 2022, July 2022 number you're negotiating towards too late. For 2021, that might be our position. Excuse me, Richard. Uh, yes. The, uh, if I heard you correctly, after we introduce our budget, and let's say we get into October, and we decide uh, we want to help the school out or help the students out with uh, a program, is that something we could come back and take a look at, or? I don't think so. You can only make transfers between accounts that you've adopted when the budget's been adopted. You can't create a new, Rob, I see you shaking your head correct. You can't create a new account transfer to the school district once the budget's adopted, I don't believe. Yeah, I don't think you can do that either. I mean, that appropriation to the school is very unusual. Uh, there's a we, did it. we did do it before where we, um, we, we paid for some programs and we so about seven, eight years ago, there was a line that you adopted in your, when you adopted yeah. the budget, like 6,000 or 18,000 or something like that. Yeah. We built a playground <laughs> uh, for them and the track and uh, that was capital improvement funds. That yeah. That was a long time ago. The one case you're thinking of, we actually paid for a program. the extracurricular activities. I think it was the journalism or the newspaper or something like that. Yeah. Where we yeah. paid them for the amount that they're talking about now with this, that are based on the stipends for I, the I, teachers. I would like to comment. Um, I, I'm not opposed to helping out the taxpayers and the parents and the children, but I really don't like the way this went about. And since I know I'm being recorded, I will invite those school board people. You, you start talking to us throughout the year. Don't just bring us in in the end and don't come into my store and harass me twice when I'm with customers trying to talk about the abuse of this pilot money. That was totally uncalled for, and I won't mention any names. And then when I hear the mayor of our town gets cut off at a meeting because they said he talked too long, that's no way to get funding or money or work with us. What, what kind of behavior is that? So if you're listening to this recording, take that to the bank. Maybe you ought to behave a little nicer and you might get a little bit more honey. I'm sorry, Mike, I heard through the grapevine you were cut off at a meeting, and I just think that is so wrong. The man's the mayor of the town, for crying out loud. He should have a special meeting to discuss this. You cut him off? You want money? 
Come on. Seriously? That's our pilot money. We worked hard for that from 20 years ago. We are the ones that went into the, into the, uh, the yeah, we went market. into the trenches. The we did. The developers and everything. I know we did. And Mike voted yeah, no well, on every one. So because of the fair share. So to me, it's like, hey, this is a fair share that we, that we lost. We sort of found it. So this is a way to give them some of that fair share. Well, okay, I wasn't here when you guys did the Zerberg Mansion, okay? I was not part of that deal. How did, how did affordable housing become pilots? I don't remember. Well, I'm not privy. I wasn't here. So somewhere along the got you, whether the state came in and did that and said, hey, no, any pilot, any affordable housing project has to be payment in lieu of taxes. It does. Okay. Yeah, no, it's it's like, just like Cornerstone, same thing. Like so all, all the affordable housing. Uh, uh, Everything we have in town, all the affordable housing we have in town. Is pilot. It's yes. not, it's, it's, if it's not pilot, like right. some of the individual houses, they're at a lower tax rate. How about, men, how about the men facility? Lower assessments. Lower assessments. Lower assessed assessments. value. Ten is lower assessed value, not lower tax rate. Yeah. Yeah, lower assessed value, so then their tax rates lower because they're value. Remember, we didn't we didn't do this thinking. This thinking was up in Trenton or better. You know the whole uh, industrial zones, redevelopment zones, pilot payment, low taxes. You know what? It wasn't us guys in Delanco that said, "Hey, let's uh, let's cut the school out and the county out and the fire company out of their share." It's you know there was reasons for it. Let's not forget the reasoning behind. Well, it was it was to in entice. the past. It was to entice. People, it was to entice in our industrial zone to get people in here to fill it. I mean, you wouldn't have what you have out there if we didn't well, have. The beauty was it didn't there. bring in school children to, you know, to uh, flood the school district with uh, students. Pardon? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of that. It, it was it was because these uh, redevelopment zones did not uh bring in school children to uh flood the school district with uh tuition right it was it was a safety net when, to think to build up the industrial zone actually right That's but then when you go ahead and you put uh you know affordable housing and pilots and students that you know well that's, that's not something we did uh, yeah exactly it's a shame but that should have been rethought up at trenton well, let's let's get back on track. Uh, may, I, may I just say something about the pilots? Please. Just because we do have public that are um, in here. Um, it, to note that industrial commercial pilots um, are very different from residential pilots for affordable housing and that there's two um, very separate and distinct statutes which guide uh, each type of pilot. And again, Doug's not on on this meeting, but I believe um, the pilots for our affordable housing may have been mandated through statute because there was affordable housing monies um, and uh, a that required that we provide a pilot to these developers. Now, not all affordable housing gets a pilot, but um, with the ones that have the pilots, it may have been required required through statute law that we give them a pilot. So um, again, Doug's not here to clarify that, but um, again, all pilots are not created equal. The, the commercial industrial pilots have to have a very separate and distinct statute. Um, and there's a lot, they're very technical, they're very complex, um, as well as a separate statute for those uh, commercial um, uh, residential pilots related to affordable housing. Yeah, I think Thank in, you. in, in the you. residential uh, affordable housing, I think it depends. Uh, I think what triggers it is their financing, whether there are tax right. credits, low income right. the tax credits, credits from the yeah. feds. Right. And uh, I'm speaking as your housing liaison who is, had to take courses and get certified in affordable housing. So I just wanted to bring that out. So maybe that helps with the clarification a little bit. Um, thank you for those long nights. Um, <laughs> So we're, we're, we're up a penny, right? And to reinstate the, the police uh, funding uh, uh, budget cuts. Uh, and do we want to give Public Works uh, return that uh, ability for the part-time or for the uh, six months? Well, it's already almost six months. So I, 
I don't see that as a as a we benefit. Be able to get somebody on by the time we get somebody on, it's going to be close to that. I'd say, you know, as Christina talked about, if you want to take a portion of that or add another ten thousand in a combination of things, ten or fifteen to public works in case we get the person on earlier than July. And also I did cut some for equipment. Uh, you know, John had said he'll try to make do within his OE, but if we want to uh, loosen that a little bit and add five, I took 8,000 out of his uh, equipment. He wants a plow and a mower and so on. If you want to make sure that those things are not an issue, uh, you could probably add uh, you know, 15,000 to public works. So in addition to the 45 or as part of the 45 go 30 and 15 depending on whether you want to go one or slightly over one uh we're back up uh, like uh we're talking so we gave you 50,000 55 60,000 that would be 55 six, 60,000 would be fine we could fill back in some of the uh operating uh reductions particularly in public works and police you trust That's us to put that together yeah. And you end up with a little bit more than a penny. This number is slightly less than a penny. So yeah. once you do that, you're going to probably be closer to a penny and a half. Uh, and, you know, you can see what that number is. And again, whether you want to set aside anything, your debate with the school district funding has not been concluded. So I don't know what to put for that. So once again, if you want to go with pick a number 60,000 for reinstating appropriations between police, public works, and if necessary, any other ones that were re reduced, and then move on and make a decision on the school district money. Does that we'll make sense? Think that. The okay. 60,000 increase will be one and a half cents. Increase. Yeah, that's that's what I was in agreement with, one and a half cents. Thank you. Chris? Uh, I, I'll, I'll do the one and a half, but I, I, think that we should be retaining the pilot money. So I think that that should be going into our budget. So my vote on that is contingent on not allocating that elsewhere. Elsewhere as in, I would as in to I the school. And I think the school, I think the school um, line item should be uh, put to rest right now. I think we should decide right mm -hmm. now and uh, you know, ask for a vote here on if we're going to continue. I, it's 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 dead to me. All right, John. Um, up or down? Uh, any any funding for the school? Just plain vanilla. Anything towards the school? Uh, I'm a no. I'm a no. I'm a yes. I was a yes. And I'm uh, not in favor. Or did you say yes or no? I couldn't hear. You. I was a yes. I was the, oh. I was a yes. All right, so no. three no's and two yeses, huh? All right, so we're up. Uh, we're clear on where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, reinstating uh, what 60k is that what we ended up with? Yep. Now we're still going with one 250 from surplus, correct? Yeah, okay. everyone took everyone's good with this, yes. Surplus all right, is everyone comfortable with, did you look at the capital program? Are we okay with proceeding on those projects as laid out in the capital program? I hope What's, so. <laughs> is there anything else on the tax rate? I'm sorry, that'll affect the tax rate because that won't affect the tax rate, the capital program, unless you significantly cut it. But 200,000 of the 225 is already appropriated. So the 25 is for down payment money for these various projects that, you know, we would put together the... Uh, the funding mechanisms for and get the uh, you know, engineer started on those things. And then you'll be authorizing the funding and then later on be authorizing the engineering contract. So there are various places you could say, you know, so we're not going anywhere, but at least for the purposes of, of introducing the budget, if this is what your intent is. So for example, one of the things I put in there, we don't know the actual numbers, is if you want to create that room and the electronics so that we can do this hybrid meeting kind of thing, which no one has commented on. I, I, Janice and I have talked about it and Kitty and so on. I assume everyone agrees that we should try to make that work and we'll know better the numbers later on. But if you all say, yeah, we, we, when it's time to be able to be physically in the room, we also wanna be able to have uh, the public be able to see and interact with you 
uh, electronically because that's an expectation that has come from this. Right now, as you found out, that can't physically happen because of the acoustics and the, uh, you know, the, the, the sound equipment. So there's gonna be a cost to make that possible so that it's this system, but with you physically in a room or some of us not, some of us having a mixture. So different people, is that something we wanna proceed with this year? I do. I think we need to get I, I, I think it, it, the immediate benefits to the planning board, uh, I think just that dynamic uh, lends itself to um, getting back in the room and, and or having some hot kind of hybrid situation, but at least have the, the technical capability and fix the acoustics in the room to make that tolerable and workable. And then the pole barn is the other more expensive item. We've talked about if you're going to have new good equipment, you might want to keep it out of the weather, but it's not cheap. But are we still head in that direction? That's something that we think is worthwhile? Well, we've put it off for the last few years. I think it's time that we do it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No, no objections there. And then Harry is, keeps up, upping the cost to do the road and drainage improvements in order to use a $75,000 CDBG funds uh, for the sidewalk between uh, uh, Hickory and Pennsylvania that is below flood. So you can't just replace the sidewalk itself. You gotta make sure that it stays about, uh, below water. But that could be between 150, 125, 150,000 of your money on county roads. Man, I was looking at that today on my way out here and I don't know why all the big fuss? I mean, all you got to do is put a little higher curb, and all that water will stay on the road and run down. Right. You know, and then just fill fill it in. You know, get rid of that crappy concrete, raise it up. You know, and pitch it down into off the curb. I don't. You know, Richard, it's frustrating. I'm sorry. I would have had it fixed in front of my house years ago. <laughs> all right. Yeah. But we do want to proceed with that program, correct? Yes. Whatever it takes. So you'll you'll know more as we get into plans and specs and so on. Okay, so I wanna make sure that we're all headed in the right direction. We're looking at all the same things and we'll move forward with those capital projects. The okay. only thing, I, the only one I've got some, some reticence about is the irrigation improvements at Field of Dreams, uh, the new well and stuff. Uh, the irrigation costs just seem to be going up and up and up and up and what, what we have to do out there and you know, um, you know, I know there's there's a lot of attention on it, uh, you know, with with Rec and Dysa and Harry and contractors and you and uh, John, um, but uh, it just seems, you know, going forward into the future, you know, our summers are going to be hotter and it's just going to be, you know, expensive to continue to maintain that. Better, better that than buying it from New Jersey American, which is a much worse. Well, oh, yeah. right. oh, abso oh absolutely. But okay. you know, I, I know I've talked to Scott Taylor, you know, about, you know, a, a drought tolerant uh, turf uh, or something that's that's not quite so thirsty. But uh, that's that's the only thing that I've kind of, you know, I wish there was another way around it, uh, especially for the upcoming lawn that, uh, you know, whatever the yeah, well, this this is, has nothing to do with that. This has oh, to do with in order, order to get our existing soccer fields to be able to yeah. safely make it through our worst case scenarios that yeah. obviously it was not the plan and the reality did not match up. Perhaps the initial the initial work was done a little bit on the low end cost. And then of course we had the problem with the contractor and we tried to do it with sod and ended up reseeding and uh, perhaps if there had been more compost put in the original soils, it would have looked like the outfield, the softball field, as opposed to what it looks like. And so we're trying to rebuild all that and that becomes operating. But uh, the problem is there's just not enough flow to get all four of those fields properly watered all year, you know, during the heat of the summer uh, with the one well. No, the, 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 you know, the work, uh, the meeting that was out there uh, at Field of Dreams and Harry's reports and, and just getting down to the details as far as uh, the hydraulics and, and the pump capability. So, you know, it's under completely understandable. 
Uh, but anyway, that was just the one point I wanted to bring up. So we're all good on the capital projects as published. Just yes. a quick question about the uh, the well at the Field of Dreams. Does the county have a well? No. Are, are they using city water or? They don't. The water. Water. county doesn't hear it. The, the bathrooms, I believe, there's so a lot. The bathrooms are city water. Yeah. yeah. They're in the city water. And, the bathrooms are, yeah. And the, uh, the gardens, the community gardens are probably piped into that as well. Community Maybe. gardens? Because we, we had talked about connecting with them years ago. Oh, did you? Okay. But they weren't interested. Are you talking uh, about on the county, in the county park? The county the park. park. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was wondering where these community gardens were. I wasn't aware of them, you know. But, no, yeah, they, Pennington. They got the... the I see. Yeah, park. I don't know where they get their water supply is for Pennington Park. No, I don't know. Okay. What's next? Uh, that's really... You've, you've answered all those questions. You, uh, you know, we'll now put together the stuff, timetables I pointed out when we switched the meeting from uh, April 5th to April 12th, where we can introduce, you have to have 28 days. So that pushes the public hearing and adoption to May 17th rather than the first meeting of May. I will be there for, but you'll know how to answer any questions. Rob will be there to answer any technical questions. But we'll start putting together the, the document and you'll see a uh, proposed budget message, uh, how we've proposed allocating after I talked to Jesse and John and Janice and so on about how to reallocate that 60,000 back into the system. And uh, so you'll be able to get back to me and we'll fine tune it and get this thing ready to uh, introduce on the 12th. Uh, Janice, Kitty, Chief, do you have uh, last comments for the group here while we, we got everyone under one roof? The only comment I'd like to make is to thank the committee for taking consideration um, of not making those cuts and how it's going to affect uh, the township further down the road to have a bigger impact than, than what you're trying to save now. So uh, I appreciate it. And, and like I've always promised, I will safeguard township's money because it's my money too. So you I'm always gonna... do, Jesse. You always yeah. do. <laughs> thank you, Jesse. Well, thank you. A good crew you got. So, Richard? Yeah. Um, when the budget is introduced on uh, April the 12th, how soon after we adopt it are those numbers available to the public? We actually publish the whole detail prior to the meeting of introduction. Yeah. So we'll actually hand it out that night and have it on, on the website. You know, the detail. I got to put together all the best practices uh, analysis as well. 15 pages of analysis. So all that's available on the 12th. And then it sits available for the four weeks, 28 days, will be a little bit more here. And then you'll have your public hearing on May 17th. And then that's when you ask, say, okay, you've had a month to look at all this stuff. It's both, it'll be in my format. It'll be in the state's format. Uh, we'll have it. Uh, what's, I forget, Rob, what's that other thing we got to call the, the easy to read uh, user-friendly budget yeah user-friendly budget so there's a state form there's a user state user-friendly form there's ours which is even friendlier in my opinion so there's a heck of a lot of information out there uh for anyone to look at and hopefully ask questions and then hopefully you'll get a lot of questions and you'll be able to answer them on the 17th and then you can decide whether to adopt of course there's always the risk of change because when we let's say a week from now let's say Prior to April 12th, we hear about how the federal money can be used. I may have to get back to you about various options with that. If we find out afterwards, if we have to amend the budget, you could end up having to table having an additional public hearing on the 17th for the amendments and then table it to the May meeting to finally adopt. Last a couple of years ago, we made some changes in debt service the last minute. And we did uh, take an extra couple weeks. New Jersey is very unusual in that in order to make sure we have the exact numbers, we're not guessing, we're not projecting on prior year's money or what we were going to get this year, uh, you adopt the budget retroactive to January 1st, which means that this temporary time between January 1st and as late as May is pretty uncertain time. 
And uh, sometimes it can force you to do things in your budget that year that you really would, if you adopted it prior to January 1st, you would have done differently. But for example, a positive thing is Jesse has some better numbers for salary and wage that are real, having nothing to do with the number of positions and so on. And we can take advantage of that information to adjust the money where we need to have it. Whereas when we gave it to you in January, it was a lot more guesswork. So uh, that's the plus and minus of adopting uh, retroactively. And Thank just you. to confirm, our, your, your debt service schedule remains un, unchanged, correct? Correct. The, the, the Schwab plan. The Schwab plan. The difference will be your future years. All your right. future years will add uh, at least 10000 a year to that debt. But again, if you're going to make a decision next year, maybe instead of paying off 358 or something close to that, pay off 400 You know, you may have the amount to do so that you are not putting yourself in a debt poor position, and yet you still have the confidence to do the capital projects that you want to do. Uh, hopefully, it could be a big number for the waterfront seawall, waterfront park seawall. Could be a big number. You want to be in a position to be able to do that uh, so that, you know, you pay off that debt because you're bringing a new debt. And uh, if you do get to the point where you got several million outstanding, that's when you, and it's appropriate, you do long-term financing. You spread that out for another 15 years uh, if the rates are good. So that's something for the long-term plan. But at the moment, you're very fortunate to be able to pay off a significant part of your debt every year. I work for too many places that have to pay the minimum and it just accumulates in millions. All of a sudden you got several million in outstanding and you have no choice but to be forced to go to long-term just in order to get through the next year. So keep on top of it. Anything else? Any other questions, comments? Uh, we are getting reviewed this year. Every third year we get reviewed by the state. Oh. Third year. So another wrinkle. We have to get okay. approval before we can adopt. Thanks for the reminder. So a lot of times what happens, I don't think because we have so much time between introduction and, and the public hearing, there should be time, but in the old days, sometimes we'd hear from the state people, Rob would get a phone call, you know, at uh, six o'clock the same night when you're supposed to uh, have the public right. hearing at seven to find out whether you could do it or not. And if they can't, then you end up having to delay your right. adoption, but we're going to have five weeks between. So we should be in pretty good shape uh, in that respect, but who knows, maybe the state people have been all laid off, which happened one year. There wasn't enough people to do a review. Hmm. I think they're all working from home. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's true. All yeah, a lot, of, a lot of them that I know are working from home. Yeah, we send everything electronically, so it doesn't make a difference where they are. Yeah. They just make sure they check off the boxes that we've gotten everything right. So right. we will keep our fingers crossed. All right. I think we're at the end here. Uh, last call for questions. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware of any need for an executive. Yes, I've been trying to ask a question, not realizing I'm on mute. And it's actually for Rob. It's a technical question. We introduced on the 12th uh, and public hearing on May 17th. Publication has to be 10 days prior to the 17th. So uh, we're looking at like about a May 4th publication date, which has to become part of the budget document. Yes, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll prepare on that. Okay. So, okay. So it's 10 days prior to the hearing, right? 10 days prior to the hearing, you must publish it, yes. So we're around May 4th, so, okay, thanks. That'll work. Good. We're all good? These guys know what they're doing. Okay, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Just Aye. for the record, you did not need a um, executive session. No. Okay, all in favor? Motion carries to adjourn. All right. Well done. All right. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you very much, everybody. Good.